when I think back to some of my favorite games, Goldeneye on the N64, for example, yeah. the graphics were, well, let's just say retro, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But I still remember those late night multiplayer battles like it was yesterday. Absolutely. It kind of makes you realize that mind blowing graphics are cool and all. Sure. But they're not the be all and end all of what makes a game truly captivating. You hit the nail on the head. It's like some of those pixelated classics. They just have a certain charm, a soul that you don't always find in games with photorealistic graphics these days. Right. But what if you could have both? Mm. That's what we're diving into today, how AI has the potential to revolutionize gaming. Okay. And not just by making things look prettier, but by changing the game entirely. Now we're talking. And it's important to start by addressing the elephant in the room, or should I say the elephant in the server room. You mean? Those graphics we all love, those stunning visuals, they come at a cost, a big one. Oh, tell me about it. My gaming rig sounds like a jet engine taking off whenever I try to run the latest releases. Right. For decades, the industry has been pushing the limits of hardware, basically trying to cram more and more powerful GPUs into our machines to render those increasingly complex graphics in real time. Yeah. And while it's impressive, to be sure, oh, yeah. it's starting to hit a wall. Kind of like trying to build a skyscraper on the same foundation you use for a one-story house. Exactly. So. And that's where AI comes in. Okay. I'm intrigued. Now, you've probably heard of image-to-image -image AI, right? Yeah, where you can take, like, a rough sketch and turn it into a photorealistic masterpiece with just a few clicks. Precisely. Those things are like magic. I've messed around with them a bit, turning my terrible stick figure doodles into something resembling actual art. Well, get this. Video-to-video -video AI is taking that same concept to a whole new level. Okay. Instead of just transforming static images, we're talking about real-time video enhancement. Imagine playing, say, Ocarina of Time. Oh, classic. But instead of those blocky polygons from the N64 days, the AI transforms it into a breathtaking, hyper-realistic Hyrule before your very eyes. Wait, so you're saying I could experience those classic games all over again, but this time with graphics that look like they were ripped straight out of a high-budget fantasy epic? You got it. That's wild. What game would you want to see get that AI glow up? Mmm, that's a tough one. I'm thinking maybe Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Good choice. Those early 2000s graphics haven't aged particularly well, but the game itself is legendary. Absolutely. And you see, it's not just about reliving the glory days either. Imagine the potential for entirely new games designed with this kind of AI-powered graphics from the ground up. Okay, now I'm really interested. Yeah. But before we go full-on sci-fi fantasy here, sure. let's break down exactly how this tech could change the game. Literally. So we've talked about AI giving those old-school games a serious facelift, but what about the games of the future? How would this tech impact how games are actually made? See, that's the really exciting part. It's not just about making things look prettier. It's about changing the entire game development process, really shaking things up. Okay, I'm all ears. Think about it. Right now, developers pour tons of time and resources into optimizing graphics for real-time rendering. It's a massive undertaking. But if AI takes over that heavy lifting, yeah. Well, that frees up the developers to focus on other aspects of the game. I see what you mean. It's like instead of spending years meticulously placing every leaf on every tree in a forest, they can just tell the AI, hey, made me a lush and immersive forest, and boom, instant ecosystem. Exactly. And with all that extra time and creative freedom, they can push the boundaries of gameplay, experiment with new storytelling techniques, you name it. So potentially more innovative games, quicker development cycles, maybe even lower system requirements down the line. Sounds like a win-win for everyone. It really does. And it's not just a pipe dream either. Mm. Think about how revolutionary the jump to 3D graphics was. Oh, absolutely. Games went from those side-scrolling adventures to these expansive, living, breathing 3D worlds. It completely changed the types of experiences we could have as players. Right. Imagine trying to describe Grand Theft Auto V to someone who had only ever played Pac-Man. Eh. Talk about a different universe. Exactly. And that just goes to show the power of what we call technological determinism, the idea that the tools we have at our disposal shape what we can create. And AI, AI could be even bigger than 3D graphics in terms of its impact on gaming. Wow, okay, so where does that leave us? Are we talking about like needing some crazy expensive AI supercomputer hooked up to our consoles to even run these games? Actually, it might be a lot simpler than you think. Picture this, okay? A little box, kind of like those old cable boxes everybody used to have. You mean the ones you'd hook up to the TV to get, like cable channels? 
Exactly. Except this would be a dedicated AI set-top box, but for gaming specifically. Yep. So you just plug your console into it, the AI works its magic, and then boom, sends the signal right to your TV. So HDMI in, AI does its thing, HDMI out, basically. Pretty much. That does sound pretty straightforward, actually. Right. But wouldn't all that real-time processing introduce some serious lag? Because i got to say, I can't stand it when a game starts stuttering, you know? It's a total immersion breaker. And that's where edge computing comes in. Instead of relying on some far-off server farm, all the processing happens right there in the box itself. Huh. Which means... Which means faster processing, no input lag. You got it. No more ruining your gaming experience waiting for stuff to catch up. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like having your own mini supercomputer under the TV. Mm, you could say that. And get this, the implications go way beyond just gaming, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How so? Well, if this tech works for games, there's no reason it couldn't work for movies, TV shows. Heck, even those old home videos gathering dust in the attic. You're blowing my mind here. Oh, hold on. So you're saying, like, remember how we were talking about AI taking those blocky old games and transforming them into HD? Yeah. This could be used to, like, take those old VHS tapes of my family vacations from the 90s and make yeah. them look like a high-budget documentary. Exactly. It's about taking existing content and giving it a whole new lease on life. That's incredible. OK, before we get too carried away with all the possibilities here, let's talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to AI. Oh, you mean? Jobs. A lot of people, understandably, are concerned about AI taking over jobs in various industries. So what happens to game developers, graphic artists, all those folks, if AI is the one creating everything? It's a completely valid concern. I get it. Big changes can be scary. But I really see it more as an evolution rather than a replacement, you know? So remember those traditional, like, hand-drawn animators who were worried when 3D graphics first became a thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, guess what? They adapted, they found new ways to use their skills, new roles emerged, and the industry evolved. I think we'll see the same thing happen here. So it's more about working with AI as a tool rather than being replaced by it. Exactly. There will always be a need for that human spark, that creativity and vision that drives the entire process. But the tools will evolve and new roles will emerge. We might have like AI trainers who specialize in guiding the tech to achieve specific artistic styles or AI artists who collaborate directly with the AI to create truly groundbreaking visuals. That actually sounds pretty exciting when you put it that way. Yeah. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible not shutting people out. 100%. Think about, say, indie game devs who are often working with really limited budgets and resources. This kind of technology could totally level the playing field, allowing them to create stunning, high-quality games without needing a huge team of artists and programmers. That's you said earlier about technological determinism, right? The tools we have shape what we can create. And AI has the potential to democratize game development in a way we've never seen before which means more people can bring their unique visions to life. And that is incredibly exciting. We're not just talking about prettier graphics, we're talking about a whole new era of creative expression. So it all boils down to this. If you could create a NY game with no limitations, no constraints, what would it be? A mind-bending sci-fi adventure through a procedurally generated galaxy. A fantasy RPG where your choices actually matter and shape the world around you. Maybe a historical simulation where you can rewrite the course of history itself. Tell us what kind of game you would create in a world powered by AI. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit us up in the comments below. 